So, Nate, you are officially on the clock. Who are you taking with the first pick in the most valuable qu- most valuable player draft non quarterback edition? I know. With uh, uh, I, once you told us the draft order, I, I reached out to the player and signed a deal. And with the number one pick, we're going with Aaron Aaron Donald. And I am happy as can be to just have that wrap a bow on it and just move on to pick four. <laughs> so was there? And I I probably would have gone the same direction if I had the number one pick as well. Is there any consideration about? those factors we talked about he's already 30 he just turned 30 over the next five years he will make an average of 22.6 million dollars so you're paying high high premiums for him is there anything that pushed you in possibly a different direction when you were thinking about this yeah of course of course that he is yeah this year he's 30 years old and and you don't know i mean he is we as as freaky as aaron donald is he is an undersized defensive tackle i mean it is what it is so of course that concern crossed my head and going and so I started kind of like looking at other names there are a couple other names I kind of was like okay I don't want to say them right now because I don't want to give them away for you guys but there's a couple other names I kind of was like thinking about and then but with him it's just like all right don't overthink it I mean this guy is one of the greatest defensive players ever like period 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 not just oh the generation just period and just just that transcendent type of talent he's he's I consider the best non-quarterback in the league and it's just you can't pay that type of guy enough. He affects so many ball plays, and yeah, where I'm getting him in his mid 30s. I wish I got this five years ago, but I'm still. I think if, even if you get two to three, he doesn't miss time. Like he is a guy that he is so athletic. He takes care of his body. He's kind of just got those freaky traits where he stays healthy. So I do think he's going to age gracefully. Because the other underrated thing too with Aaron, because I was with him at Pitt for two years, where no one blocked him for two straight years in practice. We had to take him <laughs> off, take him off the field if we had to run play action passes and spring ball and stuff because it was like we can't practice because he blows everything up. And with him is that he's very cerebral and he is a guy, he knows what O-line calls are. So when he hears rip, 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 he goes, oh, well, it's pass and they're moving away from me or it's pat and oh, okay, down, down, you know, okay, T, 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 he hears these calls by the second quarter, he's got them figured out. And that's something that's underrated with Aaron. So I think that's why, yeah, he might lose 10% of his athleticism over this time. He's so smart that he's going to overcome that and still be an extremely effective player. I think you talk saying that he's historically good. He's one of the best players ever is important because even if the gap shrinks between him and the field, it just evens the playing field. It's, it's <laughs> he's so far ahead of everyone. You look at some of the numbers. I was looking at his pass rush win rate compared to his double team rate earlier today. He's in his own zip code on the chart. And it's yeah. not like he's slowing down last year. Cause I, that was my question when I was considering him at two, if you were going to go to a different direction, it's like, all right, is he slowing down? Is there any signs of decline? Obviously, he got hurt at the end of the year. But before that, the answer is no. He had 50 yeah. pressures between weeks 10 and 17 last year. No one else had more than 38. And if you look historically <laughs> at some of those outlier, outlier talents, Reggie White was 37 when he won Defensive Player of the Year in 1998. And I know that that's anecdotal and maybe that's one example, but that's what Aaron Donald is. He's one of the greatest players of all time. So if and it's he won the defensive player of the year this year, he is still the best <laughs> player in the league at any position. I think including Patrick Mahomes when you talk about the gap between him and everyone else at his spot. So I think it's a no brainer. Even at his yeah. age, I would have gone the exact same direction. I totally understand it. Now I'm f-ed because <laughs> two, it's, it's really hard. I, I think you could go so many different directions here. And in the non Aaron Donald camp of this, this is when you have to start weighing all of these different sorts of factors i went with chase young okay okay i was i just i was curious i think if you look at and i i have concerns about chase young and when i say i have concerns he's not a fully formed product yet if you go look at some of the pass rush numbers from last year i think i want to say he was like 25th in the nfl in pressures he does not have a defined pass rush plan when you look at the way he approaches the game a lot of splash plays i mean think about the the san francisco game that force fumble that he had and just blowing stuff up that happens and so it's there's some projection involved here but he's 22 years old he is 22 years old he's already an effective player and if you look at the contract even if you ever if you, so what I did was I did the five year average for pretty much everyone by looking at what they might make on their second contract, everything else. So Chase Young is the second pick in the draft is eight million this year, nine point four, eleven, and then he'll probably make about eighteen on his fifth year option. If you average it out over the course of the entire contract over the next five years, it's about fourteen point seven million. 
Think about what the top edge guys make. It's 25 now. So the discount you could be getting him for if as as soon as this year he becomes one of the best two or three edge rushers in the league, I just think that potential discount, it's worth it to me. It's just worth where he might go from here, how young he is, and the fact that he's still in the early days of that rookie contract. Lindsay, what do you think about that? I mean, I would have taken him at three. Okay, would, that's good. If you that's had good gone to know. someone else. So yeah, if you had seen me probably right when you took him, I was like, you know, um, because I think for all of those reasons and, you know, we talk about value and upside and all of those sorts of things. So um, I like the pick. It makes a lot of sense. And now I am uh, scrambling my big board here. <laughs> I mean, I should have been prepared, but yeah, now I'm going through the um, which not as cheap guy do I want here at three? Because my favorite really cheap guy was Chase Young at this position. And we're talking, when you're picking in the top three here, you have to do those very, very premium positions. And I'm not sure I'm ready to take a really expensive wide receiver or a really expensive left tackle. So you guys ready for my pick? I'm ready. We're very ready. Uh, I'm going to take TJ Watt. Oh, okay. I like it. I've been going back and forth. I had two very comparable players, but I'm going to take TJ Watt here because I think he is the next best kind of all around defensive player. He's going to be the defensive player of the year at some point because Aaron Donald can't win it every year. I think the other guy that I was debating put between here also should be a defensive of the year um, award winner at some point, but TJ Watt still cheap for one more year. And then he's going to be very, very, very expensive, but he's going to be worth every penny that the Pittsburgh Steelers or somebody else spend on him. So um, I think you can put him in any defense, any scheme. Um, There's, I don't think there's a single real, real weakness in his game. So I'm going to, I'm going to take TJ Watt and feel a little bad about it. I don't know. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm going, I'm going TJ Watt. I completely understand it. Nate, if you look at his production over the last couple of years, I mean, he has simply been the most disruptive edge player in the NFL yeah. over the last two seasons. He's finished second in PFF's pass rush productivity over the last two years. He's forced 17 fumbles and defended 25 passes in four yeah. seasons. He led the league in defeats in 2019. The 2020 numbers haven't come out. It's a football outsider stat I always like. Essentially just like an all-encompassing how Mm -hmm. much do you screw shit up on defense stat. Mm -hmm. He was number one in the NFL in 2019. I I just think that outside of Aaron Donald, he's an argument as the most disruptive defensive player in the league at this stage. And like you said, one more cheap year, and then he's probably getting something that I assume will be in the Joey Bosa range. That's where his agents should probably start the conversation so you're paying a premium but you know over the course of the entire five years it probably averages out to like 22 million dollars a year even if he gets that joey bosa contract which you can live with when you're getting a guy with that sort of disruption nate yeah and that i mean you don't have to twist my arm with about a wisconsin badger so yeah, exactly. with, 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 with cj that's also uh, part of my methodology here you're right Taking exactly a badger before nate can <laughs> that's that's perfect uh so yeah don't have to worry oh no actually we do uh but no with with tj it's just i mean he is it, it's he almost gets uh undervalued a little bit because everyone like like thinks oh it's just he only gets pub because he's jj's brother and i think that actually does happen a little bit as people I, just I, me don't, too. don't people don't believe the tape like this dude is unbelievably disruptive you just listen to stats and it's just one of those guys like you could watch a game and every snap he's doing something even if it's not i mean he does he does some some of the smart stuff i I even tweeted a clip the other day about it it's just that he has such awareness of the game that's why the steelers are able to do what you wrote about in the sense that what, what keith butler was doing and going hey these guys are smart and really good let them go let like let them make a play like go Better bees, just better be right, but let's do it as a full <laughs> defense. And it works because TJ Watt is that damn good. And I, I think he, I mean, he's smack down his prime. I believe he's going to be 27 this year. I mean, if you're getting him for the next five years, this is nice. I, I think he's going to age well. He's an athletic guy. Uh, his game is athleticism, it's smarts. It's just, like you said, disruptiveness. He does everything great. It, it's a damn good player. So I love TJ. I, I, I can't really fret about this, especially you're getting a cheap year for him uh, in the, the first year. The ability and the effort combination just jumps off with him. I mean, yeah. he, he plays so, so hard, really strong. Like, he could just play through guys in a way that's yeah. always really impressive. And that little dip and rip move that he has, 
where he puts his shoulder on the ground. It's just everything you'd want in an edge rusher. Everything. And he does it consistently game in, game out. 